Hello everybody, we're back with Expedition Dr. Lucy and she's gonna give us her knowledge so that we can be safer in the backcountry. And today's topic is pelvic fracture because that's a life-threatening injury. You've got big vein plexuses running on the back wall of your pelvis that go down into your pelvis. As it fractures, you often shear those veins and you get all the blood just draining down into that pelvic bucket, if you like. And there's nothing, if you fractured it, there's nothing to you to clot that blood and stop the bleeding. So if you don't fix that, you can lose all your blood, go into hypovolemic shock and potentially die. Okay, and you very often speak about the golden hour. Yeah. Is that the case in that injury? Yeah, so the golden hour we talk about in any trauma and it's essentially the hour that you can have making the difference between life and death. And a few things like this, like treating a pelvic fracture, if you do that within that golden hour, you can preserve a life. Why did you have the massive fall? Are there falling rocks? Are you at risk of avalanche? Are there other people around going to get in your way? So secure the scene, make sure that someone has called the emergency services, explain where you are, explain this is serious and that they should come as soon as possible. Like with anything, again, as you approach the casualty, make sure you go back to those first principles, those primary survey, airway, breathing, circulation. And pelvis comes under C, comes under circulation because of the amount of blood that you can lose. So if you saw the fall, how big was the crash? What did you hit? Is there something in your mind that thinks this person could have fractured their pelvis? Mm -hmm. You're going to see it on the face, right? That there's going to be no more, like the color of the face, right? Yeah, so someone with a pelvic fracture will have gone into what we call shock. And this isn't like, oh, you've had a shock. This is hypovolemic shock where they're losing blood. So what you'll notice is things like you can look at their skin, they'll look pale, they won't have any color. If you feel their hands, they might be cold, they might be a bit clammy. And if you try and take a pulse, either on their, a radial pulse on their wrist or a neck pulse, their pulse is gonna feel really weak and really thready. And that's all gonna give you an indication that there might be something going on in their pelvis. But if you feel the bony bit on the top of the pelvis, and if you just press that gently, they might moan or groan in pain. So to bring that pelvis back together, what you need to do is use what we call a pelvic binder. You're probably unlikely to be carrying one of these in your rucksack, but I'll show you, I'll demonstrate how to do it with a, with a proper pelvic binder, and then we can show you how to improvise. So you're kind of going to just seesaw it up underneath them, and the positioning is quite important. So how I know to get it in the right place is I put my thumbs on the bony bit at the top of someone's pelvis, let my hands fall as though I was putting my hands in their pockets and where my little finger is, is where the middle of that pelvic binder should be. And then just pulling tight. Again, it's better with two people, with someone pulling in that direction and the other person pulling in this direction, just till you hear a click and then easing off and holding it tight. Okay, so if you don't have the pelvic binder, you can use anything. You could use a jacket, again, trying to slide the jacket up underneath, but putting a reasonable amount of pressure on there so it's fairly tight, enough to just bring that pelvis back together, but you're not squashing it. You're not totally putting all your body weight behind it. Tying that off. So how about a belt? A belt would be perfect, no? Um, belts are often a little bit too narrow and they, they're not quite good enough to bring that pelvis back together and they can cut into the skin. So what you could use a belt, but what you might want to do first is wrap something like a wider thing, like a skin, okay. to, to get that tension and then put the belt over the top of the, the sling, so uh, of, the, of the skin. So something about that wide is good. You can, if you've got a binder, just, just to bring the patient's legs together for the evacuation and tie their legs together at the ankles. What's the next step? Well, again, I think if they've had a big trauma, a big injury, it's really important once you've done an intervention to then go back to the beginning. So go back, check their airway, check their airways open, 
check their breathing, take their breathing rate if you can, their respiratory rate, jot that down, and then see if you can feel a pulse, check their circulation, check for any head injuries, check if they're conscious, if they're alert, and if they're talking to you. So when you've checked their A, B, C, D, just again, making sure that you're keeping them as warm as possible, okay. that's really important. Make sure that the emergency services are on their way, that they have all the information that they need from you. Maybe if you need to prepare a landing site or something, um, but just yeah, making sure that the casualty is is in the best position possible for that evacuation. What if you can't have a evacuation? Can you move a person that has a pelvic uh, injury? And and will the fact of having the sling help you to move the victim? Yeah, definitely. So if you're gonna have to move them yourself, um, if the helicopter can't land and that you've got to do a um, a land evacuation then having that splint in place will really help. It's important to understand that every injury in the backcountry is different, every situation is different, the weather's always different. So you've got to take each, each day, each injury as it comes and just use your common sense and basically do what you can with what's available to you. Lucy, thank you so much. This is really valuable information. I hope you never need to uh, use this, but if you need to, you're going to be very happy to have practice, to have it somewhere in your head. Because always the most important in free riding is to be making it safe home. So remember, be safe out there, out there, have fun, have some great adventures and see you next time. <laughs>